Before I start this video, I want to give a special shout out to uh, Grizzly True Crime channel. And uh, I want to thank her for, you know, using the part of my uh, video when she was uh, talking about Jocelyn Nungri, the case. And uh, she said some pretty nice things about me. I appreciate that. And uh, I appreciate the shout out and, you know, having folks come to my channel and subscribe. So shout out to all the new subscribers. And uh, I really do appreciate that. I just wanted to, you know, acknowledge my thanks and welcome everybody to the Dynamic Reason channel. Now, back to your regularly scheduled video. Come on, guys. I'm Steve. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. If it's your first time stopping by the channel, hit that subscribe button. Trust me, you won't regret it. If you're a return to subscriber, as always, guys, welcome back. And I do appreciate the support. Guys, tomorrow is Jocelyn Nungri's funeral. She was 12 years old. She's out here in Houston, Texas. The story I've been covering right up the street from me, 10, 15 minutes from here. And uh, I'll be attending the funeral and I'll be reporting from there live for you guys. Well, not live, but I mean, you know, I'll put it in the premiere. But uh, I plan to get some good footage and show my respects like a lot of other people that were touched by this story. If you're new to this channel, one of the things I do on my channel, I put up either the GoFundMe that they have. Or if I know I'm going to go and attend such fun said funerals like I did for this young lady up here. It's Gonzalez. She was uh, killed out here in the summer of last year. And uh, she was found under bed by her father when an intruder came into her house while she was home by herself and took her life violated her and took her life. Now, what I'm going to do is, like I said, you guys that are new, you don't really know a lot about this channel. I put up the uh, cash app because I'm going to be going tomorrow. I will see the mother there. This money, what I do is if you've got anybody wants to, you know, the story touched you, if anybody wants to uh, contribute to the cash app, you send it to me directly. I match it dollar for dollar. I usually put it in the check or money order or depending on how small it is, I might put it in cash, which I usually don't do. But um, and I give it to the family out of respect. You know, when we do these stories and stuff, yeah, we get paid. A lot of people want to count your money and say things. You, you're talking about something for money. No, this is my job. This is what I do. I'm passionate about this. I care for speaking about those that don't have a voice. And um. If anybody wants to, I don't care if it's a dollar or whatever, if the story touched you, you know, this is not for me. But um, the cash app's there if anybody wants to contribute. Those that have been on this channel know what it's about. Anyway, I'm going to talk today about something nobody's really talking about. People mention it, but they don't talk about it. I think a lot of this has something to do with domestic abuse. And the reason why I'm bringing that up is this. Hear me out. These two men that took the life of this 12 year old girl, those of you not familiar with the story on Father's Day that just passed, she snuck out of the house at 12 years old, went around the corner. About a block and a half. To a 7-Eleven, talked on a uh, payphone, supposedly to her boyfriend for a little while. Went in the store, got some snacks, was heading back as she was going in the store after getting off the uh, payphone or whatever. These two men right here, Franklin Jose Pena Ramos, age 26, the skinny one, and Johan Jose Martinez Rangel, age 22, the one, the, the fat one. They met her and asked for directions back to her apartment where they were staying as well. In a ruse, her being nice, hey, yeah, I'll take you back. I, I'm going that way, I guess. They followed his girl. Not even a quarter of a mile across the street to a bridge in which they abducted her, took her under the bridge for two hours. They tortured and violated this child. It was only until the next day when her body was found floating in the uh, waters underneath of that bridge. Now, I've covered this story. I went to the crime scene. I went down there where the crime scene was at. And... 
you know, I never mentioned this, but you can see down there where it's, it's you could see where the body was at. Just let me put it that way. Um, and the, the reason why I'm bringing this up is the reason why I say like this has something to do with domestic violence. I don't want to drag this on. Let's get into it. Um, these two guys was from Venezuela. I've seen a documentary on Venezuela because, I mean, I've been thinking about this case, thinking about this case, what would make somebody do this heartlessly. And uh, I couldn't remember what South American country it was. And it was Venezuela where a lot of like a couple of years ago, we was up, they all had this thing where they was talking about the violence against women in that country. And it says, you know, I'm going to read this thing right here. It says a lot of women get their human rights violated in Venezuela. And it says. This country was warned that irregular armed guards in the country committed human rights abuses as well as citizens, including killings, torture, kidnapping, internal displacement of indigenous communities, trafficking of persons and exploitation of women and children. That's why when I was covering the immigration, a lot of these people that you see are coming are coming from uh, Venezuela. A lot of the, uh, Hispanic folk and shout out Venezuela. But anyway. There are people that are coming for the right thing. There are other people that are coming just because the borders are open and they're allowed to come the fuck in here. These two guys are a perfect example. Pieces of shit that shouldn't touch U.S. soil in the first place. They had bad intentions when they got here. See, it's a big, you know, everybody has this big delusion of America, of beautiful women, so on and so forth, and you can do whatever you want. These people are coming from places where they're already doing whatever they want, but it's in a negative light. And they bring that same bullshit over here and do that to people here. This girl was a citizen, 12 years old. You can't differentiate a woman from a child. And check this out. Over there, women get killed in the streets. They disappear. A lot of times they'll find them dead in the graveyard. I don't know why they was taking them to cemeteries and, and raping them and all this other kind of stuff. And then leaving their bodies out there. Kill women in the street, beat on them. Stab him up. I seen a video somebody sent me from Venezuela where a dude was stabbing a chick up right on the street and people walked by like it was nothing, like it was a dog sitting there. Nobody even looked. Stabbed to the death. There are places out here where it's like no holds barred. And we're letting folks like that in here without even betting them. The one dude, one of these two dudes had a uh, ankle monitor on her that he cut off after he committed this atrocity against 12 year old Jocelyn. They threw her body in water. What kind of mindset is that? There are people that are human, but inhumane in nature. And actions show it. Actions speak louder than words. This girl was found the next day by somebody driving over the bridge. A lady driving over the bridge thought it was a mannequin floating in the water. Here it was a 12-year-old fucking girl. Hurtful, man. My mother got to come and uh, to a crime scene where her daughter's floating in the water, half naked. Horrific. Every parent's worst nightmare. Now, a lot of people are on both sides of the fence. She was wrong for going out of there. Yeah, she was. A lot of people are blaming the mother. I'm not feeling that. Because if you put your child to bed and she, you know, you go to bed as well. Can't watch children 24 hours a day. You got to sleep. You know what I'm saying? Children do stuff. That's why they're children. So, I mean, I, I, I'm not going to blame the woman. Because you got to remember, this woman, a lot of y'all don't know, this woman was going to work the next day. It's summertime. She was going to take her child with her. So her child wasn't at the house. So, I mean, that does say something to me. You know, you care. Hey, you go to work with me. Anyway, that's the first thing I wanted to talk about. Second thing is she fought. A lot of people don't know that she fought. She fought for her life. She kicked, bite, and scratched. When the guy was, uh, when they caught the guys, the guy had the shirt off. You seen the cuts and stuff on his arm. I, I thought he, when he jumped off the, tried to jump off the balcony, that's how he got it. No, he got it from young Jocelyn fighting for her life, y'all. For her life. And I mean, you know, regardless of what you say about the mom and stuff, you got to understand something. Being violated 
and you know taken advantage of by men is a woman's worst fear can you imagine a child or a mother who's a woman who knows it's the worst fear knowing that her child went through that horrifically spirit crushed this child's spirit was crushed god knows what she thought in the last moments they tied her up y'all and threw her in a body of water and then went home showered and got a good night's rest got up next day like nothing ever happened these are not humans they're animals there are a lot of them out here not just uh coming from other countries but walking amongst us right now Tomorrow's going to be a hard day for me. This is a dead child I'm going to see and pay respect to that I never even knew. I got to watch her family cry and be at the worst time of their life. Saying a final goodbye to a child that should be here. This could have been any of us. It could. These uh, people that are doing crimes out in the street are not... Uh, discriminating on who they do it to. They look for a soft target and a lot of them come under the guise of a smile and a hello. We are under attack in this country, both foreign and domestic. Something needs to be done about it. It does. This girl should still be here. So, I mean, I got the cash app up. You guys want to uh, leave something? It's all good. If not, it's still all good. I'll be bringing a cash donation to them tomorrow out of respect. I can't just come empty handed to a place after I've done stories about it and not follow it through if I can. Now, I can't be every place at all times, but I try to do my best. And um, I just wanted to bring up a couple of things, man. These dudes, man, one dude telling on the other one, one dude trying to push himself out of it. To where, oh, I just kissed her and then I held her down. They held this child down while they ravished her. That's heartbreaking for any man, let alone a woman, to deal with. That was her oldest child. That counts for something. She had siblings. I think she had another sister and a brother. I don't know. I, I, know she, I think she had a brother. But think about it. This crime not only altered the mother, but it altered all of the siblings. Disgraceful. I'm Stock Market Steve for the Dynamic Reason channel. As always, like, comment, share, and subscribe. You can't feel sorry for somebody that puts themselves in harm's way that knows better. But sometimes children don't understand the dangers that are present. I mentioned before that this young lady might have lived in that area so long and made that trip back and forth to where she might have thought. Nothing would ever happen to her because it's her neighborhood and she's been outside. Nothing has ever happened. Children don't know the dangers that are always lurking around the next corner. Two more things I almost forgot about these two pieces of shit. This is just me. I don't know if this is true, but I'm thinking I want you to look at this real quick. Remember, I took this video at the crime scene before I tell you what I'm about to tell you. Look, guys. I'm going to take you guys back down there to this uh, scene. We're going to be quick. I just want to show you something really fast. Now, guys, this is where her body was found, right? And you see it's a homeless encampment down here. Man, this is creepy. And uh, you got to understand, like, you know, they was wondering, like, a lot of people saying, how do you see a body when you're driving by places? I'll show you. You see these cars? This is the way she was coming. The opposite way that I said she was yesterday. The only way you can see where I'm standing under a bridge is coming this way. The other side is a big pipe. You see that big, it's a big pipe. You see that big pipe under there? Can't see anything from over there. And it's lower. It's more of a ground clearing over here. Going up here, this is the way the lady had to come to see young Jocelyn's body there under the bridge. Guys, that's when I went down there to the crime scene, not even a week after this atrocity happened. Now, that was about an hour after they police were on the scene. They had cleaned up all of that stuff out there, you know, like gloves and stuff like that. I was out there at that day. I was out there with News Nation, Newsweek, no, News Nation. And uh, 
I'm going to tell you something. Going back, because I kept thinking, I'm like, okay, okay, it makes no sense. If you look where the memorial was, where I first started walking, where they had the teddy bears and stuff, what did you see on the ground? You seen telephone poles. If somebody's going to abduct somebody, they want to do it as fast as possible without any obstacles in the way. So what does that lead me to believe? When they were walking across that parking lot from that 7-Eleven, if you go back and look, you'll see the 7-Eleven on that corner over there. They were coming across. As they were walking, they cut across the street. The part where I said the lady was coming and she seen down that little gap. I think uh, Jose, I mean, Johan Rangel or Jose Martinez Rangel, so many damn names. They said he grabbed her by the throat and he put his hand over her mouth when, he, when the abduction started. I think. This is just my opinion. I'll explain it to you. He grabbed her, picked her up and ran her in that little skinny part down the thing. There were no cars coming. He grabbed her and he ran down there. Why? Because if he grabbed her where the street light was at, it's the telephone poles there. If she screamed or anything, somebody would have seen her. And he could have tr risked tripping and falling over them, uh, that obstacle, that pole. It had been too much of a time limit to get her down there. Another thing is, if he went on the side where the telephone pole was at, guys, right? Going down there, you got to get low. He would have had to go up under, because he's the taller of the two. He would have had to wrestle with her and go up under that pole, that, that drainage pipe that runs the length of that bridge. He took her through that middle part. That dark part, that's where he snatched it. That's why her body was found on that side of the bridge instead of moving out where it could be seen. Because when I first got there, all the reporters were like, no, her body was here. I was like, no, nah, it wasn't. It got to be over here. My first video, I'm going off of what everybody was saying. It wasn't there. It's under the bridge. Because I'm like, if it was here, the lady wouldn't have seen it. That's because she was coming the opposite way. Yeah, it might not come up in court, but I'm more than sure, in my opinion, that's how he got her. Because it's the easiest way. It's quiet. You can get down there faster. And if you look at the slope on both sides, because that's uneven ground. If you look at the slope on both sides, you'll, uh, you'll see that goes right down. I mean, it goes right, you'll go right in the darkness quick. Another thing I want to say to y'all real fast, in my opinion... I'm sure in their country, they've done this before. Let me tell you why. Number one, the efficiency of when they did it. The guy said, hey, man, don't do that. But a normal person that has never seen it or not used to that would say, hey, man, what the fuck you doing? Hey, stop that. It's kind of like, man, don't, don't, don't do that. Ah, ah. And it happened. He didn't stop it. And then he went down there with it. Ride or die, you with your boy. Another thing is this. Did you see how creepy it was up under there? That homeless encampment where people go back down there and chill and, and chill. I think they'd been there before and they knew that was there. Because if you're walking on the bridge and you're coming back and you're walking across the street. This is another reason why I think they pulled them down that part. You're walking across the street. If you're walking on that side. You won't see that encampment because it's under the bridge. If you come across the side, you'll see everything that's down there. They made that trek back and forth multiple times. They knew that was down there. They might have chilled down there because it was stuff down there where like people drink and stuff. That might have been a spot for them to go drink, get high or do whatever it is. They, they knew that was there. And that's when they pounced on her. Maybe it'll come out in court. Maybe it won't. But I was down there. I seen it. I seen it. This is hurtful, man. Stock market Steve for the Dynamic Reason channel. As always, like, comment, share, subscribe. I just want to talk about a couple of things people mention, but they don't really think about it. And I was there. I seen it. I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Justice uh, Jocelyn.